The field of health promotion recognizes that people's health is not just influenced by their behavior alone, but it's influenced by what's around them. And that includes the people around them, the organizations, the community, and the broader policy. At the Center for Health Promotion, we strive to develop multi-level interventions that can not only influence people's behavior, but also can change their environment to help them be more healthy. We get to produce creative interventions that are tailored to individuals and our community members to, to do social good, but we also have a mission to further the science. We literally wrote the book on health promotion program planning. Intervention mapping is a systematic framework for developing multi-level health promotion interventions based on theory, research, and community engagement. And it's been used widely across many health topics in diverse settings and populations. And it's a planning process that's being taught in schools of public health across the US and internationally. A foundational principle of what we do is community engagement. And that means engagement, not just with individuals, but also with stakeholders, with leaders of organizations, and others that make a difference in people's health. Saluda Meets Manos is a community intervention um, that's evidence-based designed to reach Latinas to increase breast and cervical cancer screening. And it's a great example of what we do at the center. We took an evidence-based program and used intervention mapping methods to systematically adapt this program for the local community. A lot of these women are suffering, um, well, um, they, they don't have um, transport to get to the clinics, they don't have childcare, they don't even have a clinic to go to, they don't know that they can do eligibility for low cost on these clinics. So that's where we come in. We are a real grassroots. Our style has always been talking to people and paper and pencil maybe a flip chart, but with COVID, all of that went away. And because of the relationship that we've had with the center, the center was able to teach us the skills to continue to reach the community during COVID and specifically Zoom. A unique feature of one of our COVID programs is what we call the community JEDI approach. A JEDI is a type of intervention. It stands for Just-In-Time Adaptive Intervention. So we've taken this concept to a community level. And the idea is to provide communities with rapidly changing information that's going on because of COVID so that communities can help us tailor messages to the populations that need it the most and creating messages that will have the most impact. I think one of the strengths of the center has been the innovative uh, methods that we use in harnessing technology for public health. We've been involved in a, a number of uh, different projects that look at using digital curricula in the schools, that uh, use decision support systems in better decision making for individuals, for patients, for clinics, in enhancing their public health efforts and their decision-making towards health. And we're doing some interesting collaborations now on looking at the potential for machine learning and deep learning methods in extracting, understanding, and repurposing messages in the uh, social media domain. Prospective students get really excited when they hear about all the different topics they can work on. They can study from one of six cities across Texas, including Houston which is the most diverse city in the United States. It's also home to the largest medical center in the world. So the opportunities for research and collaboration are endless. Project Homes is, is a study being conducted by the University of Texas Health Science Center of Houston for persons who have an opiate use disorder who are also taking medication-assisted treatment. We're super excited about the possibilities for this, not just for Texas, but, but beyond, because giving people the opportunity to actually recover with medicated assisted therapy is transformative and we need to accept that in public health and a number of people have but not everybody yet so we're hoping to 
get people to listen a little more and, and provide the data that people need to really believe and see that, that this kind of change can happen. The area of implementation science is a really important one for us at the Center for Health Promotion. It's the study of what factors influence the adoption and implementation of evidence and evidence-based programs. So here at the Center, we have a lot of projects that work to increase the adoption and use of evidence-based programs in community health centers, in schools, in community settings, in hospitals. There is one uh, project that is funded by the CDC that I work on for increasing colorectal cancer screening. Um, and so we are really working at improving the implementation of evidence-based interventions um, to increase uh, colorectal cancer screening among medically underserved uh, populations here in Texas. Another organization that we work really closely with is the United Ways 211. 211 is a, a three-digit call service that is used um, really widely around the country. In the, the Houston area, the Gulf Coast 211 answers about 2,000 calls per day. We work with 211 to implement programs that can rapidly provide information to the people that are most in need. We've worked with them on cancer control, on developing smoke-free home policies, and now we're working with them on COVID-19 to increase vaccination and increase testing. I was first inspired to go into public health given some of my personal experiences navigating the healthcare system, but today I'm inspired by the persisting health inequities that we still see. The main goal of the center is to improve health and quality of life. We're very proud of the successes to date and look forward to future successes as we move into the coming years.